Hi there, welcome to our second in a series, sitting under a tree reading a book. This is the tree I've chosen today. It's a robust old thing, but it's not really alive anymore. It's got a great dry seat where it lost its bark here, so I'm gonna just check, make sure there's no scat. Do you know what scat is? It's wild animal poop. Oh, look, there's some. I won't sit there. Looks like that might be raccoon, some kind of herbivore, because it's all seeds. So I'm here at Prairie Loft in Hastings, and today's book is about animals and where we might see them hiding. It's called, I See Animals Hiding. Thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna skip a couple of pages where there are animals that we don't find around here, just in the interest of time and attention span, mine and yours. Here we go. I see animals hiding. I see animals hiding. I see a porcupine high in a tree. Wild animals are shy and always hiding. It is natural for them to be this way. There are many dangers in the wild. Even when they are caught unaware out in the open, wild animals try to hide. They stay behind whatever is available, a thin tree trunk or even a single blade of grass. Most of the time, they go unnoticed. Now we can see that porcupine really clearly, right? But if it stays super still and we don't look up into the tree where it might be, I wonder if there's a porcupine in that tree. Hmm. I don't see one, but if we never looked up, we would never know. And that's what this porcupine probably counts on. The colors of wild animals match the colors of the places where the animals live. Because of this protective coloration called, do you know what it's called? Camouflage, yep. Wild animals can hide by simply staying still and blending in. Woodcocks and other birds, which spend much of their time on the woodland floor, have patterns and colors like those of dry leaves. I see animals hiding. I see two woodcocks on the leafy ground. Now these woodcocks are a kind of sandpiper, and they mostly have habitat east of here, where we are in Nebraska at Prairie Loft. But there's another kind of bird with similar coloration that is a quail, kind of quail called a bob white, that looks a little bit like these. And we see them and hear them at Prairie Loft a lot. They're hard to see, of course, because of the colors. But they actually say their own name. A bob white says bob white. Oops. It's kind of what a bob white sounds like. So if you hear one, you know it's a bob white. Of all wild animals, deer are the wariest. Do you know what wary means? It's like shy and quiet. So if you're wary, you're always looking out, observing carefully. Even though their colors are camouflaged, they feel safe only where there are good hiding places nearby. In a summer meadow of tall grasses and small shrubby trees, deer can hide quickly by just lying down. If they weren't moving, it would be hard to see them. In autumn, deer shed their red-brown summer coats and replace them with warmer, grayer winter coats that better match the gray and brown trunks of leafless trees. I see animals hiding. I see a whole herd of deer on a winter hill. That is a lot of deer. This says there are 20 deer on the snowy hill. Can you spot them all? That would be really cool to see that many all at once. I don't think I've ever seen a herd that large together like that. If you want to keep looking, feel free to pause the video. I'm gonna skip that one and that one. These are winter animals that we don't really have very much in Nebraska. The colors and patterns of screech owls blend perfectly with tree bark. These are really cool animals and we do have them in Nebraska. These small owls can sleep all day out in the open and not be discovered. See how it blends in with the tree there? And screech owls have different sounds that they make. Some of them are kind of a low trill, but they also have a high whinny that sounds like a tiny little horse in a tree. That's kind of like this. <laughs> So if you hear a tiny horse in a tree, it's probably not a tiny horse in a tree. It's probably a screech owl. Besides an owl, there is one other bark imitator on the tree. Can you tell what it is? Oh, check that out, that's cool. 
Let's see. <gasps> I see animals hiding. I see an owl and a moth on a limb. Look at that. That owl knows the moth is there. It might go after it. That moth better either fly or hide again. I see animals hiding. I see a garter snake slithering through the grass. Up close, a snake in the grass may be easy to see, but as long as the snake keeps a safe distance from its enemies, it can sneak by looking just like another broken branch on the ground. Pretty cool, right? Here's its head with its tongue sticking out because that's how it smells the air. It smells with its tongue. And you can follow it through the grass and the clover all the way around to the tip of its tail. If they move fast, they can be startling, but garter snakes can't hurt you. This is a water bird we don't have. It's called a bittern. You can look it up, B-I-T-T-E-R-N, but I'm not gonna read that page. <gasps> and last but not least, animals hide by staying inside. What's that? Those chickadees are checking out that raccoon tail. Chickadee is another bird that says its own name. One of the calls it makes kind of sounds like chickadee dee 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 chickadee dee dee. So some hide by staying inside, but you shouldn't hide by staying inside. If you have a chance to go outside, I encourage you to do that. Maybe even take a book, with grown-ups permission of course, and sit under a tree and read a book and look for animals hiding. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you again soon. Bye.